Tech Gambino, thank you for the tier one resub. 67 months in a row, 67 total. All right. Round two of the hour, hourly rapid arena. All right. How do I want to reply to that one? I'll go with C6. First time playing this guy. Chile? I have that right? Yep. Okay, D5. How's white going to react? A chop. All right, so this is likely turning into Slav land exchange. No. All right. Bishop there. I don't think the, the decision to Fienchetto is the greatest. Well, although, it, no, 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 it remains to be seen. Um, all right, why do I think this? It, th this guy, if he ends up going here, uh, I don't think the bishop on g2 will be so productive. But if white chooses a setup with d3, which is supporting e4, which will strike at my best pawn, that's a little different. Uh, I don't believe I want to make a decision yet with my light square bishop. Uh, I'm pretty sure this guy knows where he belongs, so let's get him there for starters. This is the more flexible piece of my two queenside miners. And now, now there's a little less pressure here. Something I need to keep in mind is... As soon as I move this bishop, queen here can surface. Another thing I should note is that uh, maybe white's decision to not uh, establish a pawn in the center, uh, I'm, I'm looking more at d4 all of a sudden. I think d4 is a good decision. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking at this d4 move. The knight can't go to e4 now in reply. They don't have that direct sight of e4. So d4 with what is my follow-up? d3. That punches a huge hole in the light squares and makes life difficult for this guy. I'm going to go for this. I think I'm... Uh, I, I think maybe I could have considered yeah no 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 i don't know right now because of that again but at this point right here i, I believe d4 is best because now this is very clumsy stability of the queen knight clearly in question no checks against my king knight here uh that's short-lived uh, i have this defended twice um a6 Wait, knight, knight b4. Knight b4. Yeah, okay. I mean, knight b4 still, I could play d3. I don't I don't necessarily even have to react to the knight on b4. I, I could maybe say to myself, you know what? You're not bothering me. I have that c6 square, c7 square covered. Something I do have to be mindful of, though, is if I do play a6, maybe queen a4 is the reply. Queen a4 stops this because of the unprotected rook and adds a third attacker to d4. So, maybe best is to first... play d3 um i have to be i have to be careful um i feel like i'm in the better position here uh, the thing i want to keep in mind though is that white is one move away from castling and i still have three tempi to make before i'm castled so that's a little concerning that that difference there uh can uh can be a problem if things start to become a little too complicated and opened in the center but this d3 move is putting a is making life very difficult for white to complete queenside development if 
uh, if this exchange happens, this this is going to be an isolated pawn. If they capture, um, I should be pointing out, I guess, that I, I can't I can't recapture because of the fork. But I'm I'm okay with that. This is this is a good move still. I'm pretty sure because of uh, you know double isolated pawns that that wouldn't be so so great for white. Okay. So this is this is a little different now. If I play a6 and queen here, a6 queen here. I can follow with um, maybe bishop to d7. I'm trying to figure out what is best. I'll go with a6. Let's let's see what uh, the the decision will be. Okay, knight back. Okie dokie. E5 or not? I don't I don't see why I shouldn't play E5. Let's let's go with it then. I can go two. Safely. Alright, that's a that's a there's a gap here. My first thought is if I could maintain a piece on that square. This whole queen side is dead. I somehow have a pawn on b3. Those two pawns, two points, negate eight. All right. I could go with another push, but I think I'm asking for trouble. Knight there, it's hit three times. Let's look at something else. King side development. Um, I don't really want to stop b5, I don't think. Where's my dark square bishop belong? I'm not really sure where I want to go. Alright, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna baby step it, I guess. <laughs> I guess here. Yepper. All right, we'll put the bishop here. Yeah, they're they're cruising, man. They're going quick. Let's put this rook here. Want to get off of this diagonal? All right, yeah, they're they're really flying. That is for sure. I want to get this one in. Defend here, offset the knight. I have to pick up the pace here. Castle, let's castle. I could, uh, I could be playing b5. Play f6. F6 is a good uh, controlling move. I think I may want to play B5. Their queen has a tough time moving. Let's let's force something here. Let's go with B5. I was thinking at this kind of stuff, but. You know, just to slip the bishop in there, but I have to take some care over this pawn. I think maybe knight there and rook here. I, I'm no longer seeing this point directly. And if knight here, what's my plan? It's to just take it with my knight. And then address the threat on e5. Um, he has to, he, okay, so that's those are the two. Those are the two options. But now, now I have... Oh, that's another point of b5. I have bishop c4. 
All right, maybe, maybe I could carry on with going two squares. One or two. I'm going to go two. I'm going to go two. To control E4 is to control these three pieces. Because if this knight can't move, these two pieces don't see the world. And I'm in a spot to play E4. Yes, I, I should have pulled the trigger much faster, I feel, on that, uh, on that move. All right. Be careful here. Maybe I bring my knight back to its favorite square. To be careful of the pressure here. Huh. Oh. All right, I can't have it all, can I? Okay, I'm going to go with... Yeah, but then there's F3. Hmm. Oh, okay, I have this move. That's right. almost forgot about that one. So the, if, if I had played knight to F6, there's tricks here. Unleashing two, two attackers here. So bishop... This move solves both problems. The the threats on d3 directly and interferes with the coordination on c6. Uh, I'm just realizing there's a bishop check or a knight jump into here. Yeah. Okay. And I really whole lot I could do about that. I should probably challenge that guy as soon as possible. So here I'm doing that. My queen is defending here. You know, there's this kind of stuff, but capturing on either square, I get to recapture and be defending this. So there's no longer an idea to swipe the knight and then win the e5 pawn. Currently, I think that this guy here's my best piece. I'm threatening this guy three times, so something's got to give him. Immediately challenging the piece that landed in my house. Two minutes back on the clock. My knights still stand well. Okay. So no minor piece imbalances. I would love to see f4. Boom. Huge pawn chain. These two pieces are negated. I could probably go right in for this. I don't, want, I don't think I even want to, though. Knight back, f3. I don't want the f file to open up. No, no, I'm still doing it. Taking with the queen. I have this under control. Their knight is almost dead. Their knight really is dead. Has these two squares, but I have... Uh, it only has these two squares ever for the remainder of the game. But a, a pawn on g5 and a pawn on e4 will constantly give the knight problems. So this guy's dead. This is their only active plan. I can't really stop f3. If I had two moves in a row, I'd play g4. g5, g4. But uh, here's something else they maybe have to worry about. This move. Let's start with this one. So if f3, now the queen is squashed. That one hurts. This was uh, something I wanted to get in much earlier, this kind of long-winded thing I was pointing out, but uh, at the time it didn't really feel right. So they have to throw something in the line of fire. They're in a pin, and I'll probably end up keeping them in a pin. May have to be careful. No, actually, I, I, could, I could take straight away because they're still in a they're still in a pin. Let's see what they come up with, they may resign. So this is, this is really dating back to that earliest moment. I'll take connected passer, and I'll look to get the knight into d3. 
plenty of ways to do it from here. I may be perfectly content with giving up my e4 pawn at this stage instead of trying to babysit it. So I want my I want my knight right here. Uh, let me see first. Yeah, let's let's begin with let's begin with this move. So it's the plan. Chop. I'm going to take with the bishop and beyond the rook, and then get my bishop into this super square on d3 where it defends everything. I could also go for this now. My queen's defending this pawn in this along the rank now. The knight would be obstructing the queen's vision of e4 if it was on e6. Could guard it from c4 though. And now this guy's going in. So I don't know if I completed my thought earlier. This this is really dating all the way back to d4. Uh, the d4, d3 push. This has had a tremendous influence on the quality of white's pieces. So we'll see. I don't know what to really recommend here for white. Knight here can't really be stopped. No checks against my king. I am up a full knight. Big passer. Remove the blockader. Push through. We'll see. Not a time ticker. Is that what we're seeing? A time ticker? All right, we're going to find out. There we go. All right, so I could take on Passan. But I really want this square here. I don't care that this guy is passed. All right, let's chop and let's go here. I'd love to have connected passes. We got it. Full rook now. All right, they resigned. <laughs> 